Before he went to prison, New York City's Giuseppe Morello was the boss of bosses, universally acclaimed as the most powerful mafioso in the United States. After he got out, his career had a second life in the 1920s with Joe the Boss Masseria. That life was cut short when Morello was killed on the 15th of August, 1930, at the age of 63. This is the story of Giuseppe Morello's assassination. What happened that day, by who, when, where, and why. Morello had a storied life, beginning in his native Corleone, where he joined his stepfather in the local mafia. Wanted for murder, he and his family ran to New York, where Morello and his brothers would make mafia history. Giuseppe Morello was a counterfeiter and a cold-blooded killer. He was fully invested in the mafia life, the original gangster. Each of his brothers followed in his footsteps. His sisters and daughters married men who were also in the life. His oldest son and two of his brothers were shot and killed in the same gang warfare that owned Morello in life and in death. You could say that the beginning of the end for Morello was in 1910 when he was sentenced to 25 years in prison for leading a counterfeit operation. He discovered soon enough that his plan to lead the rest of the gang remotely was impracticable. The Lamonte brothers took over the Morello Terranova gang and two of his captains, Salvatore d'Aquila and Gaetano Reina, split off and formed their own families. Both of them would oppose him in the Castellamorese War that would take Morello's life. When he came back to New York City in 1920, d'Aquila made it clear that he was out for Morello's blood. He had Giuseppe Morello and his brother-in-law Ignazio Lupo both denounced among their peers in the Mafia forcing them to flee the country for assistance. By the time it was resolved, Umberto Valenti, who had accompanied them, switched sides again back to his old boss. Valenti and Salvatore d'Aquila had a long association. In 1914, d'Aquila assassinated Charles Lamonte, d'Aquila's main rival. Within months of their return from Sicily, d'Aquila killed Lamonte's successor, Morello's half-brother, Vincent Terranova. Back from prison, Morello became an enforcer for Joe the Boss Masseria. Morello had a lot to offer, but he also needed protection. Joe the Boss was the most powerful mafia leader in New York throughout most of the 1920s. The Castellamorese War was fought against Masseria to end his absolute reign, his monopoly on crime, at the end of his life, Morello was Masseria's conciliar. In February 1930, the boss had been leaning hard on Gaetano Reina. According to some sources, Masseria made a deal with Reina's underboss, Tommy Gagliano, to kill Reina and take over his family, a murder committed by Vito Genovese. Initially, Masseria's appointment was Joseph Penzolo to lead the gang, but none of the members liked him, and he was assassinated in September. After Morello and Penzolo were both gone, Gagliano became the new boss of the Reina family. Although he was appointed by Masseria, he was probably already in league with Lucchese against Masseria in support of Salvatore Maranzano. Ironically, Gagliano used his United Lathing Company to finance Maranzano's war against Masseria. Morello, who worked for Masseria, was one of the original investors in United Lathing. Dequila was killed in 1928. Now it was the summer of 1930, and it was Maranzano who wanted to take Morello out on his way to Masseria. Morello's office was on the second story of a four-story building that he owned at 352 East 116th Street up in East Harlem. His sister Mary, the widow of Morello's old colleague from Corleone, Giacomo Lima, lived on the third floor right above his office. On the day that he was killed, Giuseppe was in his business office with a real estate partner, Joseph Peranio, and a contractor, Gaspar Polara, talking about building contracts. In his book, The Mob in the City, Alexander Hortis calls the young real estate partner Joseph Perano. Other sources call him Joseph Perano or Perano and conflate him with a Brooklyn boss by this name who was killed in March of 1930. 
Perino was also nicknamed the Clutching Hand because, like Morello, he had one arm which was to sables. But young Joseph Peranio, the real estate developer, he was a uh, 25-year-old man, single, the son of a couple from Corleone, uh, born in New York. And he was also the third cousin once removed of the Dallas Mafia bosses, Joseph and Carlo Peranio. We know who Peranio was because the record of his homicide matches the address and date of the shooting in which Morello was killed, and Peranio's parents are named in the certificate of his death. Peranio was, um, like I said, unmarried, and he last lived at 335 East 106th Street. After Morello's death, his widow Lena and their children lived next door at 337. Miranzano sent Sebastiano Domingo, who was known to us for a long time and only as Buster from Chicago, to kill Morello. Miranzano needed it to be a surprise, or Morello would have gone into hiding and they might never have seen him again. So that's why um, he brought in an outsider to do the job. Buster knocked on the door of Morello's office, and he answered. And according to Mike Dash's book, The First Family, he opened the door a crack, and then the killers forced their way in and shot as many rounds into the room as they could. All three men in the office were hit. Uh, Polara was seriously injured in the attack, and Morello and Peranio were both killed. Peranio was shot in the chest and then jumped out of a window. He survived the fall, and he lived long enough to give testimony to police. He had been planning to return to Italy that day. There was a ticket and a passport in his pocket. Giuseppe Morello, the target of the assassination, was 63 years old. He left his wife, Lena Salemi, and their four children. Uh, Joe the Boss was killed the following year, in March, and his rival, Maranzano, was killed in September ending the Castellan-Raising War. Mm -hmm.